If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So in the channel, we've already done the CFG to PDA process. And the whole reason for doing that is to show that uh, the context-free grammars are equivalent to PDAs. Okay. Um, and the reason for this is we want to show that PDAs really are the right model of computation for the context-free languages, which are the language of all the context-free grammars. So what we've already done on the channel is the CFG to PDA process. But to show that they really are equivalent, what we need to do is this one right here. To show that if we have an arbitrary PDA, we can convert it into an equivalent context-free grammar. And we're going to actually do this in several stages. So the first stage here is that we are going to assume something about the PDA. Where you think, well, if you're working with an arbitrary PDA, how do you assume it, anything about it? Because in principle, there could be, say in the start state, there could be any set of transitions going out of that start state. We have nothing that we can know for sure about it. But what we're going to do is we are going to be able to modify the PDA without changing its language, which is exactly what we want. We want to be able to work with any language described by a PDA, not with any PDA, any language described by a PDA. As long as I can make a PDA for it and I didn't change the language, we're good. So what we're going to do here is two things, two things, technical term. So the first one is we're going to assume that the stack uh, ends empty. So when we're done, the stack ends uh, empty. This was not a requirement for, um, for the context free, uh, when we had the PDAs before. It started empty, but it didn't have to end empty we're actually going to force it to be empty here. And there are actually several ways of actually doing that. Um, but we're gonna actually force it to be empty. And the second one is every transition uh, will either push or pop, but not both. So every transition does something to the stack in terms of the stack height changing by one every single time. It can't do both pushing and popping at the same time, and it can't do neither of the two. So no matter what happens, the stack either grows by one or shrinks by one. One of those two occurs. So let's actually handle the second one first because I think that's a little easier. So there are four types of transitions that could ever occur. So let's say we have Q going to Q prime here. And we could have, it doesn't matter what is actually read on the transition, so I'm just gonna label it A, but it could be anything. It could be epsilon. But let's say that we have a transition that does neither of the two. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this transition over and over so that I can just modify it over and over. Make sure it all fits on the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the style of these guys so that it's easier to see. So let's make this one red. And this one I'm going to make green. Okay, so we have, uh, so what are the possibilities here? So for the green guy, it could be that we don't pop and we do push a Y, for example. For the third one, it could be that we uh, will pop an X and don't push anything. And actually, I'm going to modify this one too so it's, it doesn't merge with the orange above. Let's make it blue. So over here, we could have it that every single tra this transition in particular pops and pushes. So remember, for this case right here where it pops and pushes, it pops first and then it pushes later. And we went over the reasons why in the, in the previous video. So what, what are we gonna do here? 
Well, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to actually simulate this with additional transitions. So I'm going to zoom down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this into two transitions. So here's Q. Q prime I'm going to put way over here. And I'm going to put a brand new state right here in the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break up, so to speak, this push and pop uh, transition into pop first and then push later. So whatever we read on this first transition, I got to pop first. And I'm going to make sure I don't push anything yet. And on the second one, I'm going to not pop and then push. It has to be in that order because we had to pop first before. Well, what are we going to read on the transitions? Well, in totality, we have to read an A. Whether that's epsilon, it doesn't matter. So it doesn't actually matter which one of these reads as long as by the end we have read an A whether that's epsilon or not. So what I, what I usually do is I just make the first one the same as whatever the transition is, and the second one is going to be uh, not reading. It, you, you can change it to be the other way, but it doesn't change anything. The key here to note is that this state right here is brand new. Okay, There can't be another transition that comes into here and then leaves going somewhere else because uh, we have to be able to take this transition as if we took this one and we can't go on to some other route here. Okay, well, this tr these two transitions right here, this green one and this red one right here, are totally okay because they push... Uh, or pop, but don't do uh, both of them at the same time. The only one we need to fix is this purple one. So what are we going to do with that guy? Well, again, what we can do is we, let's just break it up into two transitions. And I'm going to make it pink this time. So let's have Q and Q prime right here. So again, we have our state in the middle right here. So we have to push something at some point because it could be that the stack is empty at this state Q. And if I try to pop something, then the stack, we, we can't take the transition. We got to be able to take the transition no matter what this, what's on the stack here because there's no popping occurring. The alternative is to push something first and then pop in the next transition. There's no issue here because they're on two separate transitions. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to not pop on the first one, and I'm going to push some symbol X. It doesn't matter what it is. In fact, it could be just a new symbol. It doesn't actually matter. But I'm just pushing something. And on this next one, I'm going to pop the exact same symbol. It has to be exactly the same because... I want to end up at Q prime with the exact same stack contents that I did originally at Q because the stack didn't change according to this. So I need to be able to, whatever change I make in the first one, undo the change in the next one. And we went over the reasons why we can't pop on the first one. Okay, and then the trick about reading, I could do either way. I can have it be read and then not read on the next one or the other way around. Okay, so that's good. So we are able to handle this one totally okay. And then now let's handle this one. The stack ends empty. The way that this is usually taught is that the stack can end empty. What we're going to do here is slightly different. We're going to force the stack to be empty if it accepts. Okay, so I, I should actually clarify here. So uh, if it accepts. If it doesn't accept, then I can't guarantee anything ever. But if it accepts, I can guarantee this. So how does this work? Well, we don't know anything about the PDA to start with. Okay, so let's just say here's our PDA. And here's the start state. And we don't know what the start state does to the stack. It may push, it may not do anything. In fact, it may even try to pop, in which case it's a useless PDA. But we don't know anything other than it has 
a start state, and let's say, for example, it has two final states. Okay, well, what we can do here is I'm going to make it so that it has exactly one final state. And I'm going to move this over so I have some room. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure it has exactly one final state. And we did this with NFAs before. So what I'm going to do is something similar. So here's my new brand new final state right here. And what I'm going to do is have something which I call a triple epsilon transition like this. Okay. And of course, this doesn't read, doesn't pop, doesn't push, so it does basically nothing. And I'm going to make these no longer final. Okay, so that's good. We are enforcing that there's exactly one final state. Great. Now what we can do, so I'm going to change the blue here. I'm going to have a self loop here, which allows ourselves, but not forces, to pop every symbol on the stack if we want to. So I'm going to have epsilon x goes to epsilon for all x in the, in the stack alphabet. And we usually denote that as q. I didn't say that in the when I introduced PDAs because it wasn't that important. But this here is the stack alphabet. Okay, so that's the stack alphabet. The thing is that this allows us to end with an empty stack if we want to. But remember, there's no reading on this transition. And if we have no input left, then we don't have to take that transition if we don't want to, because PDAs are not required to end empty. But what we're going to do is we're going to enforce it. So the technique that we did with CFGs to PDAs was actually a pretty good one in that we, um, we, you know, we put on this bottom of stack uh, marker and we went to the final state only if we can pop that off. That's actually a really good idea. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to make a start state right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on this uh, transition from the new start state to the old one, I'm going to have epsilon, uh, epsilon goes to dollar sign. And dollar sign, remember, is this special character. It, it's just a character, but it, it just means to us that it's a, uh, a, it has a different purpose. So here is a new stack character. Okay, so that's a completely new stack character. Note that this PDA is not modified. It doesn't do anything different. Why? Because it's a new stack character. No transition in here can rely on the dollar sign. And if the transition doesn't have anything to do with the stack at all, doesn't modify it, then it didn't matter whether there was a stack character here. And there's nothing that ever relies on the height of the stack at any point right here because there's no way to check what the stack height is. So, yeah, so the behavior of this PDA now is completely, it's still unchanged. It doesn't do anything different. And we still can go over here and still end non-empty. But here's the key. We can actually enforce that the only way to accept is to pop this dollar sign off, which means because this is on the bottom, that means that if we pop it off, now the stack is empty. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that state no longer final, sadly. And I'm going to have yet another, or I guess new, final state, which down here in green. And finally, I'm going to have epsilon dollar sign goes to epsilon to pop that off. I could forbid the dollar sign from appearing right here, but if I have two transitions right here, one uh, on popping dollar sign and one going down here, it doesn't actually matter. So the one, the key here is that I'm able to come down here anyway. Only when there's a dollar sign on the stack, which means the stack otherwise is empty. And if it isn't that, then I can take one of these transitions until it gets to empty, uh, I mean to dollar sign. And then I can come down here, which means that the stack is empty. Now, it could be that there's still input left, 
and we have the dollar sign on top, that's totally possible. But the key is we won't accept if the input is not fully read because that's the rules of a PDA. You have to accept only when you're in a final state and you have read all the input. And that's a way to actually enforce that a PDA stack is in fact empty. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your thoughts about this convert, the start of this conversion down into the comments or anything about PDAs and emptying stacks. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. And as always, I'll see you next time.